Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to tarot.com. Uh, my name is Coleman Stevenson, and I'm the owner of The Dark Exact. This is... I'm Stephanie Adam Santos. I am a tarot reader here in Portland, Oregon. I go under the name of Tarot Obscuro. My company, The Dark Exact, makes products for ritual and for divination. This is the tarot deck that I designed this year, which I'm really, really excited to tell you is now live on the tarot.com site. I know I, I took a few liberties in designing the deck, especially the major arcana cards are represented pretty differently, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, in addition to the, the work that I do with the Dark Exact, um, I, I also am a reader, as, same as Stephanie. Um, I've been working with tarot for nearly two decades. It's a big part of my life. Um, I'm happy to add deck designer to that. That was a goal I always had, and it just took me a long time to realize that that was actually achievable. I'm also a writer, mostly focused on poetry. I have a couple books of poems out, and I teach writing here in Portland, Oregon. Stephanie and I do a lot of collaborations. We teach together. Um, we teach writing, and we also teach um, uh, divination, sometimes com combined classes, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, using divination techniques as prompts for writing, um, and we do tarot events together too. So, um, I'll just tell you a little bit more about the deck so mm -hmm. that you can um, get a little bit familiar with it. And it's an all local deck for anyone, any of you from Portland, Oregon. It's, uh, well, you can say. More yeah, about sure. That. Which that was really important to me. I looked at a lot of different places to try to get this um, deck produced. It was really important to me that. I could say it was totally local. I actually found a printer here in Portland, a printer in downtown Portland, Oregon, which was just such a, a score in my mind. They're called City Graphics. So yeah, I thought maybe I would I would just show you, uh, since the symbolism is so different, give you an example of what I'm talking about there. So to compare, I don't know if you can see can, that. Do you want to hold that one? Hold that. Um, so. Here's the high priestess in a couple different decks. So my deck, and then a, a more classic deck that I imagine everybody's familiar with. So um, obviously, I took a, a more minimalist approach. Mm -hmm. um, it's stark, black and white. All the cards are like that. There's no color. Um, so instead of having the human figures, and I talk about this in the article a little bit too, but instead of having human figures, I wanted to represent the archetypal characters as maybe more universal symbols. That, so one of the things that disturbed me about a lot of decks is that I didn't really feel an affinity with the, the faces that I, I saw in, in these pictures. So I instead have used plants and animals and objects um, and then, of course, alchemical symbols, because I wanted to have a consistent language that ran through the whole thing that, that was immediately decipherable by anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was my hope, is to make a more universal deck. So I think there's a mystery to the deck, too, that I know. When I'm reading, I usually ask um, who I'm reading with to choose their deck, and I'll have a couple options. And, you know, that gives information about the nature of the question, and, and I, I notice um, that people who choose the dark exact they're really drawn to the mystery of it. It's stark black and white, and yet the cards are very open. So there is a directness about the deck, but also a really nice veil. And I think that um, it's really you know, visible in this High Priestess card where you see the fractured flower kind of representing that the, those open spaces of the High Priestess that don't need to be logically connected and sort of that um, those kind of strange intuitive channels that run through. It seemed a good way to approach it for me just because she, you know, the high priestess, she can see things that other people can't. She can see something like this that's broken into parts and immediately know what the whole of it is. She, she lives in that world of the whole and its, its parts at, at all moments being comfortable with the fractured parts, not needing the whole, because she can intuit things from what's not known. 
And then the, the alchemical symbols here, so this is the one for arsenic, which is all about that, you know, enlightened vision, being in that kind of a trance-like mm. state. Um, and then the symbol for ether, which of course is that sort of heavenly material mm. and the, the fifth element, you know, that's like woven in between all things. And so those seemed very fitting symbols uh, to accompany her uh, card image. I, could we talk about the devil card? Um, I think Coleman's interpretation of the devil card is really different and I think speaks really well to kind of, well, could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I know a, a bunch of trees is not what you necessarily think you were going to see when looking at the devil card, but I just, I like this idea of taking the concept of of confusion or being led off course and, and picturing it as this this dense wood, right? Um, I, I have a, my, my undergraduate degree is in folklore and I have studied folk narrative a lot. I have a, a, a big interest in folk tales. Um, and so thinking about how in fairy tales, right, the, the symbolism is that the, the child is lost in this, um, as Bruno Bettelheim, the folklore scholar, calls it, the, you know, dark impenetrable wood Mm -hmm. And that's symbolic of that internal journey, right? To, to, to grow up, to find the self, right? You make it out of the woods, you've, you've learned a, a good deal. So that's I like to also, remind her, That's also the place where you encounter the witch's house, yes, where you encounter Baba yes, Yaga's yes. hut, the devil, that villain that you need to confront in order... And that there's a very powerful lesson, and I think that's yeah. what you're saying. Sometimes it's yeah. not about avoiding the temptation, but about being able to master it, to live through it and, and no more. Thank you Thank so you so much. much, everybody, and I hope that this was useful to you. Have a great day.